Peace and love, everybody. This is your boy, Colo, coming to you with another Android head unit review. Today, we have the Benizi 9.1, 10.1-inch touchscreen, single DIN this time. 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of ROM. Let's see what we got in the box here. Let's pull it out. Oh, we got the Benizi boy again. You go to their Facebook page, you get 10 bucks off. Got a little kitty here next to a vase or plant. All right, let's cut these cables open and let's see what we got in here. You can get this particular model off of Amazon. I will put the link right below. As always, I appreciate you guys, so go ahead and like the video and subscribe, please. All right, now that we got the plastic peeled off, let's take a look at this thing. The plugins are on the upper back this time, which is a little different, but it'll work. Here are the dimensions for this thing. All right. Let's see what else is in the box. We got a USB cable, harness, another USB cable, reverse camera cable, audio video harness, GPS cable, a couple of mounting screws. It did not come with any mounting hardware. Cat book, the operating manual, and we have the Benizi boy again. Here's a look at the audio video harness right there. Amp, video in, sub, woof, right in left in audio right out left out video out and video in here's a quick look at the harness i'm not going to go through each cable but that is the reverse camera cable here's how i have it set up i'm going to be using that little box right there to power it up so i can get it all done right here it's set up by ground to ground the yellow and red from the stereo just to the yellow from the power adapter box which is really just an old school computer um, power supply these are the measurements of the unit from behind if you're looking to put it in a specific vehicle here's kind of how long and wide it is from the back perspective of it all right this is classified as a cold boot let's see how long it takes to boot up from being completely off and no memory the screen there is a 10 24 by 600 they're calling it a HD cap active touchscreen from my experiences with the 7 inch and the 10 inch these screens are extremely responsive they do well with brightness as far as being able to be seen in direct sunlight I've never had an issue so far all right so it looks like we got it to the main screen this is what it looks like when you first boot it up let's jump right into the car settings We'll do an overview of the options that it comes with. So let's take it from the top. Those are the sound settings by default. Um, system info, as you can see, it's a 9.1 Android. That's what they're claiming here. Shows you it's a quad core. Password is 8888 to get into the factory settings. And when I got into these factory settings, it was a little more than I can handle. And I went through every single setting to see if those buttons on the left side that you that are in the dark right now light up. And I couldn't find a setting in this area to light up those buttons on the side. So I'm not sure if they do. If they do light up, please drop something in the comments below because people were asking me about that on my last couple of videos. In the car settings, I don't really know what the set into car is. It has something to do with the factory settings. It has GPS. See, it doesn't do anything when you click on set into car. You might have to have some preliminary hardware that's installed in the car. I'm not really sure. Let's keep moving. Volume settings take you to the system volume. Brightness takes you to the system volume, of course. Navigation lets you pick the preloaded app if you want it to boot when it starts or not. Steering wheel is probably to configure the steering wheel control buttons. This allows you to change the boot up logo, and you could probably add your own jpeg to be the logo let's have a look at these okay so it gives you preloaded logos to boot up with you got honda um looks like it's mostly more upper scale cars there but you can change to that if you need to in other settings you have other settings that show you how to turn on the float bar handbrake screen setting force mode which i don't know what that is and reverse settings. I really don't know what any of these options are except the float bar. The float bar is a really kind of annoying to me, but it's probably needed 
because there's no physical buttons. So I'm going to disable it for right now just for the sake of the video. But let's keep moving. The Android settings take you right to the default settings of the unit. You can see more detailed information about the Android version, model, legal information, the status. It reflects again that it's a Android 9.1 version, so I'm, I'm gonna stick with that. If they say it's that, it's that. This is how you check for a system update. I already checked for it. There's no updates, and of course you have to have a Wi-Fi connection to do that. One of the first things that you really wanna do is go to the Play Store and update all of these apps you see right here that are pretty much the system built in applications that are all Google based. You gotta get those updated first to get all the recent apps from the Play Store. I got an SD card or a USB plugged up right now. So let's show you how the music works. You can click on that widget. It takes you right to the music. See how fast and responsive the, the unit is. It's pretty quick. Playing some Tupac. Rest in peace. You can hit that local music button. It'll take you right back into the music. So it's pretty straightforward. Video is pretty much the same way. I've had more success playing MP4s. MKVs gave me sort of an issue, but I've had no problem playing MP4s. As you can see, the videos play smooth. I actually downloaded VLC Media Player as a backup because of the issues I had with playing some of the MKV files. Let's see, Avatar is an MKV. Oh, fired right up. So MKVs do work, but I would also recommend getting a backup video player if you do have a file that is not compatible. That little button right there changes it from 4x3, 16x9, you can toggle the two, or just leave it on auto, it's your choice. While we're on the video apps, let's see if Prime Video fires up and see how responsive it is. Again, I don't watch videos while I drive, but I just like to have all this cool stuff on the system. Okay, so it, it actually booted up pretty quick. Let's fire something up random. To be honest, I don't even really watch Amazon video. I, I'm really more of a Netflix kind of guy. Okay, that's not bad. That fired up pretty quick. Again, I'm at home, so I'm on my home Wi-Fi. If you are on a mobile hotspot driving, I would assume that it would be a lot slower. So, Prime Video confirmed. Let's move on. All right, let's just make sure Hulu works. Um, and you probably would use these apps while you're taking like a family trip and kids are watching some videos or you got a passenger that's not driving and they want to watch something else. This would be great to have in the car. Um, so let's pick something here random and see how fast it fires up. Um, come on, it really doesn't matter. Let's go here. Okay, it's decent. All right, so not as quick as Prime Video, and this video never played, so I'm just going to keep going. I don't know if it's my connection, the unit, or what, but it just spun and spun. It never loaded the video, so it is what it is. Let's look up YouTube. I mean, come on, we're making a YouTube video. we got to check YouTube, and as you can see, one of the best YouTube channels on the planet, Call of Culture Media. That's the last video I did, the Atoto A6. Go ahead and check that one out, please. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and skip my own ad here just to see if the video plays. Okay, so there's the video. It's playing, let's jump around, see how fast it scrubs. Scrubbing fine. YouTube confirmed. Let's keep going. I was able to play this zombie game, but however, I couldn't play anything higher like Call of Duty Mobile or some of the driving games. They just required too much and I couldn't play them, but this one, it's playable. I also tried to hook up a controller, like a Bluetooth controller to play this, and that also didn't connect. But Angry Birds did work for all you angry people out there that love birds. Pac-Man worked, and this is from the Google Play Games. This is also another app that has to be updated. Not Pac-Man, but the Play Games Google app. Let's get it off this boring black background and see what preloaded wallpapers that they have. Uh, okay, nothing too fancy. Hey, how you doing? All right, all right. Okay. Huh. Got the girls on here. Let's go with this one for right now. Come on. Not bad, not bad. Let's go into File Manager and see if I can pull a JPEG off of my hard flash drive, actually. 
Let me get something a little different. Okay. Uh, not that one. I missed that car. Shout out to my man, Tren. Let's roll with this one. Set picture as wallpaper. It's going to want me to crop it up a little bit. I'm not going to do that. Let's hit save. Jump back to the home screen. Well, pull down. There we go. I'm still getting used to this thing, too. Home screen again. There we go. So not bad. All right. So that worked. One of the cons to me is my Ocean HD live wallpaper does not work on this unit. I couldn't get it to work. And it's such a beautiful live wallpaper, but you know, can't win them all. Let's launch Chrome just to see how fast and responsive it is. That's not bad, but you gotta keep in mind I'm sitting here at home on a home Wi-Fi network. Let's just do a quick little search out of sheer curiosity. I'm just curious to see how fast this fires up. So let's pick a random channel on YouTube. Oh, what do we have here? Cola Culture Media. All right. So scrolling, as you can see, is pretty smooth. Images are popping up. Hitting a video. Uh, a little lag there, but that's kind of YouTube anyway. That's my Wise Cam video. If you don't, guys, if you don't have a home defense system, please check out a Wise Camera. But that's not what this video is about. So let's keep going. But we got Google confirmed. Bluetooth. Bluetooth is the most important feature to these Android decks. And it's coming up as Prology there. The code is 0000. I tried all the other ones. It didn't work like 1234. I'm not going to let it sync my contacts. This is just a demonstration. But it's paired. And that was actually pretty quick. And from jumping in and out of the car, it reconnects seamlessly. Let's play some music here, even though you won't be able to hear it due to copyright. Here's my phone. I actually only use Spotify to communicate with these systems. I don't really use the Spotify app that you can download. I just stick with the phone because it's a lot faster and more convenient, but it's nice that all the preloaded apps and apps you can install from the Play Store are available for you. All right, here's the app that I always have issues with on any Android stereo. I don't know what it is, but I'd never have any good luck with these phone mirroring apps. Probably because these are Android units by nature and I don't use an Android phone, I use an iPhone. So I'll quickly demonstrate how this is supposed to work with an iPhone. So you click iPhone basically, your iPhone and this unit has to be on the same Wi-Fi network. I tried putting it on a mobile hotspot and it just didn't work. So you hit the screen mirroring option on your iPhone, it pops up as phone link, E6, whatever, you click that. And that loaded up pretty quick. So let's see how it maneuvers. Sweat. Well, come on, phone. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's not too terribly bad. All right, let's let's get a let's get a visual app up. Let's try Instagram. Oh, what do we have here? One of the best Instagram pages again. Um, that look at look at the scrolling speeds. Okay. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram too while we're looking at this thing. Cola Culture on IG. But it's working pretty well so far. But I'm on a home Wi-Fi network. I don't know how that plays with a mobile hotspot. Let's try YouTube. Um, okay. Let's go to the channel. I tried playing one of my own videos and it just sat there and spun and spun forever so worked on IG but did not work on YouTube but again I don't have luck with these screen mirroring apps anyway so let's just move on however if you do get this working better with an iPhone or an Android phone drop it in the comments and let me know I tried to play this video well as well and it just spun and spun again so whatever Torque Pro one of my favorite apps I can't fully demonstrate it because I'm not inside of a car with the ODB2 chip that is required um, but it's a great app, and I've demonstrated in other videos, so go ahead and check those archives, please. The swipe down options are pretty handy. I'll be using these a lot. you got to switch size to switch or notify to get to settings. This does include video output, but you do have to enable it here, as you can see. Go ahead and flip that switch right there. The car amp button turns on the amp. I'm not sure. I don't have an amp connected at this moment, so I don't really know.
The cleanup pretty much releases all the memory. Okay. That's pretty handy if you got this thing on for days, I guess. Also, car settings will take you back to the car settings which we looked at earlier. So it's maybe just another way. Oh, that lets you look at the car and move the speakers around. There is a nice, handy, dandy, comprehensive manual, believe it or not, in the app section that tells you how to do quite a bit. I'm not going to go through every screen, but go ahead and check that out. It's pretty helpful. It's nice they have that built into the system as opposed to giving you a little pamphlet. You know, I think I touched on this before, but file manager right there, it just lets you look at the root of your external device. This system does not have a SD slot for you to put in a, a SD card for extra system memory. So don't expect that. And that's, that's typical with the other two systems. They didn't have it either. Here are the buttons on the side that I have not been using. You got a mic up there, a reset button, power button, home button, a back button, volume up and down. To me, those are a little difficult to hit, so I just stick with the on, on screen stuff, but they're there. And again, I couldn't get them to light up. So who is this unit for? I think it's for someone that wants a really big 10 inch screen in their car. If you have the older models, this model has a different operating system, which seemed overall a lot more responsive and faster. So again, check out my Amazon link right below. It'll take you right to the system. Uh, I appreciate you guys as usual. Again, if you want an Android tablet inside your car, check out this unit. Peace, love, and light, and catch you next time.